Feliz Navidad. I've spent Christmas in Venezuela, Costa Rica, and Puerto Rico before. All right, tonight, or tonight, I saw noche, which means night, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Tonight, we're going to talk about Christmas in Latin America, Christmas customs in Latin America. So um, what you see here is a caption, caption is Noche de Velas, Colombia. In Colombia, South America, December the 7th is technically the, the first day of their Christmas season. And they, they do um, something called Noche de Velas, which means night of candles. And they put out um, candles and those uh, luminaries in the streets all leading up to the city streets and leading up to churches and things like that. And it just looks absolutely beautiful, very beautiful. So here's what you need to know about Christmas time in Latin America. It's warm. So everybody is ready for the beach. They're ready to get out. It's technically like summer break. So schools are out for two months around Christmas time. Before you get too jealous, you get about two weeks and you get a summer break. During our summer months in Latin America, there's not really a good excuse to be out for two weeks. Some Latin American countries celebrate their Independence Day during our summer months, so they'll be out for like a week or a few days, but not for two weeks. So you actually get a little bit more time off or away from school than uh, students your age in Latin America. It's something to think about. So Latin America is warm during La Navidad. First and foremost, you've got um, most of most Latin American countries are tropical anyway, so they're going to be warm and tropical year round. But then countries like Argentina, which have four seasons, or Uruguay, Chile, Paraguay, Bolivia, those countries have four seasons, just like we do. They're far enough away from the equator, but when it because they're so far away from the equator, when it's hot here, it's cold there, all right? Traditions from country to country are going to vary a little bit, but what you'll see is a commonality of the focus on family, religious beliefs, and food. Not so much gifts. You do have gift giving in Latin America, around Christmas time, but it's usually like one present for the kids on Christmas day, for the kids. Then if you have like a boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife, you might give that person a gift and they would give you a gift or not. And that's about it. Like you don't really give your boss a present um, you don't go to like a white elephant gift party. You wouldn't expect to receive like a Christmas present from your aunt or uncle or your cousins and you wouldn't really buy presents for those people. But you may make them some food or you have a big party together and everyone brings food and you've got dancing and music, uh, you know, or you might prepare a lot of food for your church celebration or church event. Those are a little bit of cultural differences in Latin America. So before we start looking at Santa Claus and how Santa Claus is different in Latin America, we need to understand a little bit of historical relevance here. This is the actual Santa Claus, all right? So anything that doesn't look like this is historically inaccurate, all right? <laughs> um, I don't see the red and white fluffy outfit or the the cap I don't see any obesity on this Santa Claus here <laughs> um, this guy looks humble and wise he's got the two fingers there like wisdom or te does that mean teacher and art students help <laughs> is that is that what that means is that does that mean teacher in um, this at a era of art okay let's just say it means teacher <laughs> I don't know that's what I think it means anyways this is Saint Nicholas and he was the Archbishop of an area called Myr 
M-Y-R. Today, that, that area is known as the country of Turkey, and they are Islamic. But in, this, in Nic Nicholas's time here, it was a Christian empire, and he was the archbishop of this area. He believed in giving to people in need and helping the poor around Christmas time. Have any of you guys ever heard of a church or a mission or um, an organization that provides a hot meal for poor families on Christmas Day? I know you have. That's just, it's so commonplace. That was his idea. He um, had this realization one day, you know, hey, I want to tell these people about God and I want to tell these people about how God loves them but they're starving and they don't pay attention very well because their stomachs are in pain they're hurting they're cold so why don't I feed them and then talk to them about what I want them to understand you see what I mean it seems like a logical conclusion to make so he started feeding poor people and families on Christmas Day and that's a custom that we still do today and of course we're talking about the 13th century here so it's been a long time ago another thing he did was he invented wrapping paper uh, he <clears throat> through circumstance he wasn't trying to start a trend but he did start a trend of wrapping up a little present in paper and giving it to that person with no name tag giving anonymously, like truly giving anonymously. And even after his death, people in that area, like that was a cultural thing they did. All throughout the year, not just at Christmas time, they would wrap up little gifts and give them to each other. And it just made the whole city or the whole town or county or whatever you, I don't know what, the whole district, the whole area, it just made them very happy and jovial all the time. Uh, so here's another um, tradition that we get after St. Nicholas had died. The church wanted to honor him and his legacy, so they would have an annual Christmas parade. And at the end of this parade, so remember, the end of the parade, there would appear a statue of St. Nicholas in a wooden sleigh pulled by two goats and in the sleigh the people had taken gifts and they wrapped them up in what wrapping paper, wrapping paper very good and put them all in the sleigh with with the statue icon of saint nicholas and then as the sleigh would pass people would go into the streets and start walking behind the sleigh and the sleigh with all the presents would stop in front of a nativity scene where you have Mary, Joseph, and the, and the baby Jesus. And, um, and the gifts were intended to be for, for the Christ child. That's how the Christmas parade was supposed to go. You see what I mean? So um, I think that's just, that's interesting. All right, so here is a little Santa Claus from Argentina. He's wearing gaucho pants. Gaucho is an Argentine cowboy. He's wearing gaucho boots and a gaucho hat. He's also wearing bib bobs. You guys don't call them bib bobs? Overalls? You call them overalls? In my family, we call them bib bobs. <laughs> don't know why. Okay. Here's a Santa Claus from Costa Rica. Um, he's not wearing any uh, particular uh, clothing from Costa Rica. Kind of looks like he's wearing a Spaniard hat, but he's pushing the Costa Rican ox cart. And uh, the ox cart is a staple of Costa Rican folkloric art. Here's a Santa Claus from Mexico. He's holding a pinata um, and wearing a mariachi hat. Okay, we, we really put in the theatrics with Santa Claus. We've got like old dudes with an actual full beard prescription glasses in a little house with like Santa's village and fake snow going on. I mean, we really like do a good job with the presentational style of Santa Claus. 
in Latin America, they might not do quite that much for Santa Claus because Santa Claus is not the traditional gift giver in Latin America. You have two options. The most popular option are these guys, Los Tres Reyes Magos. These are the, the three wise men. They are like parents tell little kids that their present, notice I said present, on Christmas Day, or the candy that's in their shoes or stocking, comes from these guys. And so there's a lot more theatrics here. You've got people playing a part. Um, the three kings were representing like three, the three empires of the world or three dominant places on earth. So they, they want to look culturally and, and like ethnically intact according to the, the Christian tradition. So they've got you know, beards and crowns and robes and jewelry and they may be accompanied with with or without camels. I mean, they, like you see a lot more attention given to the details of the three kings. So they come on January the 6th, which according to the traditional Roman Catholic calendar, that is three kings day, the day that the wise men were had to have said to um, arrive to see the baby Jesus. And then another option are that your presents come from this little guy, the baby Jesus himself. Yes, an infant crawling around to every home on earth. <laughs> At least they actually brought presents in their story so you kind of can see the relatability there. Like, okay, they brought presents and they still bring presents, whereas this kid is crawling, <laughs> doesn't even have his own credit card. I mean, come on, guys. How is he paying for this stuff? Seriously. Um, so there are different reasons why Santa Claus is not the traditional gift giver and reasons that why in some families he is the traditional gift giver. So let's talk about Santa Claus for a little bit. Santa Claus is more of an American custom that has gained more popularity over the years. And it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's not, it's not a bad thing. But um, in our culture, we do place a lot of emphasis on gifts at Christmas time. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. We really do. We place a lot more emphasis on gift giving at Christmas time. We love our families. We spend time with our families. We take time away from work and school to be with family. So yes, family is very important for Americans. Yes, it is, absolutely. Food, oh yeah, food's very important for Americans, especially around Christmas time. Food and family almost go together. In addition, presents are also important. I mean, think about it, okay? Usually throughout the year, you don't spend nearly as much money as you do around Christmas time. When, at what point in time do you ever throughout the year just buy lots of gifts for everybody you know? You don't. That's something we do just at Christmas time. You see what I mean? But with Santa Claus, there comes movies, TV shows, songs, artwork, posters, t-shirts, all of these things. And Santa Claus has lots and lots and lots of presents. I mean, if I, it, I'm not gonna ask you to do this, but if I had to ask you guys by a show of hands, how many of you on, on an average Christmas morning as a kid, did you wake up and receive more than one present under your Christmas tree? I'm. You know, okay, thank you, thank you for sharing. I, 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 I was meaning like, I didn't want you to actually tell me, but thank you for letting me know. Um, but yeah, most American kids receive far more than just one present, right? In Latin America, it's customary to receive one present, maybe a few. And in that few presents, you, one of those presents is going to be an outfit. And that outfit is to be worn on New Year's Day. Some families include two outfits. One is for Christmas Day, one is for New Year's Day. And that's it. Because the rest of the time, and this is not like a loss, like don't feel bad that they're not getting as many presents. Dude, they get, they get two months off of school. 
they travel to the beach and enjoy the tropical weather. They hang with the friends and family. It's time for them to like reconnect, not focus on school so much or work. Um, bosses uh, typically give like what's called a um, aguinaldo, which is, a, I don't know the English word for that, but it's like, it's like a Christmas bonus, for example. And it, it's usually like half of your monthly salary. So you get like your, your monthly salary and then you get half your monthly salary as a Christmas bonus. And some countries mandate it, like you have to give this money. And they spend time with their churches and communities. They eat lots of food. And so we're gonna talk about some of the things that they do. But you also gotta take into consideration some of the obvious circumstances. Not every Latin American country is politically stable. These pictures are from Venezuela. My first Christmas ever outside the United States, I was in Venezuela. And I had a marvelous time, I really did. The country was in a period of economic stability and political stability. The man who was in power at that time is spray painted on this wall. His name is Hugo Chavez. Um, and then in 2005, he went crazy. No one really knows why, he just did. Um, I think he was maybe hanging around Fidel Castro too much, and maybe Fidel Castro gave him some bad influences. And then his wife, then Hugo Chavez's wife left him and he got worse. And he wanted Venezuela to be a socialist country. Um, he started putting all their money towards oil. And by doing that, because Venezuela does have access to a lot of oil, especially like off the, off the coast. Um, you guys know the Sitgo gas stations? Sitgo is owned by Petróleo Venezolano. It's owned by Venezuela Petroleum. So Venezuela owns Sitgo gas stations. You don't really see much of them anymore, but you used to. In doing that, he stopped agriculture. So think about that. He stopped putting money towards food. So when they started going into a recession, not only were they having economic trouble and there wasn't enough money and people were losing their jobs, they also had no food to grow for themselves because they were importing food from Colombia, and Peru, and other countries. And it just, it got bad. It got really bad. Um, you see that poster on the wall? And that was given to me in Venezuela. That is Simon Bolivar. He's like the George Washington of South America. A friend of mine named Oscar David gave me that in Venezuela. He was my first Venezuelan like like friend, like like dude, we're brothers. You know, whenever you're in the United States, call me, we'll hang out. If I'm in Venezuela, I plan to come back soon. I never did, but I plan to, I will hang out. Fluent in English at age 17, got a job with the Ford Motor Company in Venezuela. Really smart guy, huge heart. Just a loving guy, man, really great guy. Was kidnapped by Venezuelan gang members. And because of this economic recession, and because funding had been cut everywhere across the board, there were no police. And his family had to pay $10,000 to gang members for his release. They kept him for two weeks and didn't feed him. They kept him on a cold concrete floor for two weeks. I mean, that's bad, man. Things got really bad in Venezuela. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, now we're in a global pandemic. And so Santa Claus, you know, forgive the <laughs> disheveled appearance here. Some countries, like I said before, they don't really put the theatrics into the Santa Claus presentation like we do in the United States. Santa Claus is not handing out coupons for retail stores. He's not handing out little candy canes and little toy cars for the kids. He's handing out bread, bags of rice, bags of dried beans. That's what Santa Claus is handing out in Venezuela this year. The, the big picture there, that's now. That's from Christmas now. This year, right now, this month. So let's talk about some of the better aspects of Christmas in Latin America. Um, Wait, yeah, I didn't tell you why Santa Claus. I'll get back to Santa Claus in a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have tamales. So, repeat after me. Requital. Tamal. Tamal. Tamales. 
Tamales. Listen to that. Tamal, tamales. What's the difference between those two words? It's. Yeah, one's plural. Tamal, you, you got it, you got it. Um, tamal is one tamal. There is no such thing as a tamale. You've probably heard about tamales before. There's no tamale, but there is a tamal. It's just that it's a mispronunciation. Then tamales is plural. That's more than one tamal. These are tamales, right? In Mexico, they wrap their tamales in corn husks, but you don't eat the corn husks. And, and, and they do that in a lot of countries. In some other countries, they wrap their tamales in banana tree leaves, and you don't eat the banana tree leaves. In fact, there's a joke. A Costa Rican man gave his American friend a tamal on Christmas Day. And he said, thank you. The next day, he sees his friend, and he says, hey, amigo, how was the tamal? And the man said, oh, it was very delicious, but the lettuce was so rough. <laughs> you don't eat the banana tree leaf. So this is how you make a tamal. You take your corn husks or your banana tree leaves, you need to make sure you wash them and everything. Take a bola de masa. Take like a ball of dough, smash it down, smash it out into a circle. Then you take your shredded chicken or shredded beef or shredded pork or it could be ground beef or you take meat and put that down. Then um, I think in Mexico, it's just meat on the inside, and then your vegetables and toppings go on top after they're cooked. In some other countries, they put the vegetables inside. And so like in Costa Rica, for example, they've got that little round circle. That is a round circle of this plane. It's a carrot. It's like a carrot slice. You put that in your thumb out. You take a couple of green beans, and then like one slice of red bell pepper, and you put all of that there. Then you fold the tamal up into a rectangle and tie it with a string. And in my Costa Rican family, we put two of the tamales together and then tie them with a string. Then you've got to boil them for like three hours. It's like a long time. Is it some place or what else? Yeah? Yeah. But um, some families will make them and sell them. Others make them and just trade them around. They're like little portable lunch boxes. It's, it's, just, it's one of those foods that um, usually only comes around around Christmas time, um, but you know, everyone likes to eat them. So that's one Christmas food. In Venezuela, they have a, a bread called pan de jamón, which is fresh baked bread with ham and cheese inside, like baked inside. Oh, so good. It's like a gourmet Hot Pocket. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good stuff, man. Uh, oh, and um, in Mexico, they have churros con chocolate. So you can get fresh baked churros, which, oh, oh my goodness, I'm getting hungry. I've already had lunch. Churros are so good. And then you dip them in actual, like, organic hot chocolate, like the like thick stuff. If you can, like, just dump out a thing of hot chocolate, like, and it just runs all out, that's not real hot chocolate. I'm talking about, like, 100% cacao, like, really good stuff with, with uh, cinnamon and vanilla and milk all added. It's, it's, you have no idea what you're missing, man. It's so good. So in Latin America, they put more focus on food and family. And religious traditions. There's uh, pesebres, our nativity scenes. Some homes will decorate their entire front of their house in like just one big nativity scene. Some get creative, like one time in um, Venezuela I saw a nativity scene where they had put a Winnie the Pooh plush stuffed animal with the baby Jesus. I think that's like historically inaccurate but it was adorable. Um, so, you know, some houses make a big pesebre, others have a small one. Some, most don't do it at all. It's usually like a church thing or a community thing. But you know how like in the United States, someone will make a haunted house and they'll invite people to walk through their entire house or like half their house on Halloween, like an indoor haunted house. There was a house in Venezuela that made the, a Christmas house. And they had each room a different scene in the in the nativity, which brings me to the next thing, which is the posadas. These are like Christmas carols that are 
you you can see these happening all over Latin America, but it's very a very strong tradition in Mexico. <clears throat> so you sing the songs in order, and you sing the the crowd of people who are walking in the streets will sing a part, and the people on the inside of the house will sing a different part, and it's it's planned out. But at the end of the posadas, it was kind of reenacts the journey of Mary and Joseph trying to find a place to stay. Um, you eat food to celebrate, bust a pinata, and you know, it's a celebration. Then there's also Misa de Gallo. If you're a Roman Catholic, you go to mass, like a midnight mass on Christmas Eve. And so at midnight is now Christmas day. And <clears throat> if you're not Catholic, this practice still influences your family's culture because what people like if you're protestant for example and you're celebrating christmas on christmas eve you stay up till midnight and then you open your gifts so that's that's kind of how that that practice and that uh, the religious beliefs still affect your culture um even if you don't like partake in the midnight mass does that make sense all right, so the gifts are fewer, but homes are just as filled with happy hearts in Latin America as they are in the United States. Um, <clears throat> I didn't say this because I couldn't work it in um, in this presentation, but Santa Claus is for the rich kids. And the, the sad part about that is, well, I mean, think about like only the rich parents can afford to buy a bounty of gifts for their kids on Christmas Day. The sad part about that is in any neighborhood, you got a poor kid watching a rich kid fly down the street on his bicycle playing his new PlayStation 5 and asking himself, why didn't Santa Claus bring me anything? And parents will sometimes have no other option but to tell their five-year-old the truth hey, Santa Claus is not real. It's just something that his parents told him. But they bought him the presents. We're sorry, we don't have enough money to buy you presents. But at the age of five, when you see something on TV, it's real. Anything you see on TV at age five is real. If you see someone in a cartoon die at age five, they die in real life. You don't have the, the um, mental capacity to understand the things on TV are not real until you're about age seven. You see what I mean? <clears throat> so Santa Claus is not a bad thing. It's not. It, I think Santa Claus is a very good thing. But for some people that don't have the financial ability to, to keep up with the American appearance of Santa Claus, it's just, you know, it's just, it's, it's a cultural dilemma. I'll leave it at that. It's a cultural dilemma. So Santa Claus is a very good thing. Um, our Christmas customs and practices are great. I mean, why would I not think they're great? I love Christmas time. But in Latin America, you'll just see a slight shift of focus more onto people than products. And I'm not meaning that in, in any way to, to uh, diminish our culture in the least, you know, but it's, I just don't want anyone to be judgmental about like, you know, hey, they're so poor, blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. <laughs> they're really not. Not everything can be measured in money. So I'll leave it at that, okay? Are there any questions? Algunas preguntas?